this is going to be the first podcast video of this year. Yes, yes, yes. It's the last quarter of the year and I I'm tired of living in fear. So we're going to we're going to get back into the podcast groove, okay? So today's podcast is about sensory echoes, love, mem- memory and spiritual growth. So I have a question for you. Have you ever felt like you left a piece of yourself somewhere? It's like your body longs to reconnect with the sense and taste of a version of you that is still present, but not in the current timeline. Now, if that went over your head and you don't understand what I'm saying, let me explain my day yesterday. So I was sitting down at my desk looking at my students' data. And out of nowhere, I was I was reminded of a romantic, erotic experience. And unlike previous memory flashbacks, I felt so strongly the senses, like my senses were the focus of the entire memory. And it was the scent of his cologne. So I'm like, okay, you know, I have to confront that. And then later I was reminded of my time in college. I was walking home from work and out of nowhere, this memory of the scent of weed, you know, rolled up and like the leaf, the backwood leaf wrapped around with the paper. If you used to smoke, you know what I'm talking about. So I was reminded of that and it brought me back to college days, to my college days where I associated peace with substance and friendship. So I want to share how that experience of sensory recall led me into deeper spiritual growth. First, how did I deal with those senses? Okay. How did I deal with my memory bringing to me senses and experiences? One, I wrote a poem reflecting on the erotic romance. The poem was very great. It's, I honestly think that's one of my best writings. I would say, if you don't write, do something that allows you to express yourself creatively. Yeah, I've learned that your sensuality and your creativity is linked. Create. If you if you abstaining from sex, create something. Put that energy into something else, period. Another way that I released and dealt with the senses that were triggered were was by going to my old campus. Now, that story is just crazy in itself because I was dropping off some press on nails. If you don't know, now you know. Faith Works is also a nail business. Faith Works in itself just transforms fear into faith and confidence. So the confidence part comes from the nails and obviously God as well, but you know, and you have a girly. You love the nails. It's already packaged, waiting for somebody to order it. it. Might be you. So I'm gonna just show you right quick. So these are the Reveal nail set. Um, I really love these nails simply because before I created the fall collection, I was seeking God. Actually, no, I was just meditating. I was meditating on Proverbs three, verse five through six. I trust the Lord with all my heart. I lean not to my own understanding. I acknowledge God in all my ways and he will direct my path. And as I was meditating on that and like talking to God, I had like um, a visual of some nails and it was, it was um, this green with a nude marble as well. So the encouragement for these nails is from Jeremiah 33. Okay, and I'm going to tell you what it says. There's always light in the darkness. However, you will only accept that truth when you ask God to reveal the light. Let the darkness fall in this season as the light arises in your life. (laughs) Enjoy your reveal nail set. Hashtag faithworks. 
And Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. That was a little intermission. So yeah. So I was dropping off my some nails to, to one of my ambassadors for my personal nail business. And the lo location was literally down the street from my old campus. And I was like, look at that. The fact that I had this memory and these flashbacks earlier and I'm so happy to be two minutes three minutes away from campus I felt like I should go over there you know and reflect and I walked through the quad I walked past the old dorm room um building or whatever the case may be and it was so it was so divine it was so sur surreal I think that's the word I'm looking for and like bittersweet as well so with that being said, I was able to sit down and not even sit down. I was in my car because it was getting cold. OK, it was cold out there. I got in my car and I was like talking to God and kind of crying, releasing and whatever the case may be. And this guy had sat down at the table I was sitting at. And I was like, oh, God, like make a way for me to speak to him. So like when he was getting up, I got out the car and I asked, can I talk to him right quick? And this girl had came next to him because I guess they were meeting together. And it was a perfect, it was a perfect setup, y'all. It was a perfect setup. God knows what to do. So I shared with them how God literally changed my entire college experience. I shared with them how I desired a college love story. And I did get that, but not the way that I wanted, not the way that I thought. And um it so happened to be that my college love story was literally with God because God is love. And that right there, I'm about to cry again. That right there is so beautiful to me. And I just want you to know that whatever it is that you desire, you have to get it from God first. He said that he would give you the desires of your heart if you delight yourself in him. And I believe that's in some chapter in Psalms. Don't get me wrong. You can look it up, okay? So yeah, I really just desire any listener to understand through my writing, through my speaking, that confronting the memories and feelings that arise allows a new you to arise and to emerge, okay? There were there was a lot of shame within the memories of the erotic romance experience, but there was also many lessons. The most important lesson I learned was my soul has to respect and appreciate the love of God. You also have to understand that your compass in life should not be anything outside of you. It should be inwardly. It should be God guiding you. I've learned that the word no comes from the soul, okay? If you say no, that's because your soul means it, right? And I reflect on the strength that God gives me to even set boundaries and protect my spiritual well-being. That's important. Saying no is important. And it's a scripture in James, submit yourself to the Lord, resist the devil, and he will flee. So Another version says to say no to the enemy and say yes to God. Say no. No comes from the soul, period. Being good in the sight of others cannot be your compass, like I was saying. Being good in the sight of God should guide you. In this journey, it's very essential to align your actions and your words with, the, with divine wisdom rather than seeking validation from the from the outer world okay so that's the biggest lesson i feel like god has been teaching me is validation comes from internal not external okay god lives within us we are the temple of god and we really have to lean on god's the intuition that god's give give us and in the discernment that god gives so boom the biggest thing i learned as well was shame Shame is, oh child, shame can kill your testimony, okay? Shame kills the testimony that God wants you to share. 
Embracing God's grace allows us to release shame and transform our past experiences into powerful testimonies of his love and redemption. Grace, okay? You are saved by grace. Um, There's a lot of shame that came that can come, especially when you've been living this life of perfectionism living his life to please other people. And it's like, what would other people think of me? Um, And what I also had to fight with is understanding that it's okay. Conviction is good, but God doesn't shame us with conviction. That's what I had to, it's a, it's the shame is us feeling like, Oh, I'm not perfect. You see what I'm saying? Like I'm convicted when the conviction comes it's like, okay, I'm not going to do that again. I need to talk to God. I need to repent. I need to ask for forgiveness. What is never meant for you to be in shame because God desires for us to be close to him. He says that he corrects those he loves. So when he corrects you, it's not to be embarrassed. It's not to be shameful. It's to say, okay, I'm going to humble myself. Okay, that was an experience that was a lesson I just had to learn and go through so that I can continue on. Shame keeps you stuck, literally. It's not a good feeling. Next, I want to tap on the part, on the fact that when I was in college, I would think that um, peace was substance and friendship. So the peace I thought I left behind in college was a life surrounded by the peace of others. It was what others thought was peaceful. It was it was an atmosphere that I went along with that I thought I benefited from. But the true peace comes from within. The true peace is a deep personal relationship with God, period. Okay. And I really want to ask you a question. But before I ask that question, when I was walking on campus yesterday, I had to admit that I was looking for love. So my perception of love during my college experience is changing. And to be honest, that's kind of, it's kind of weird. It's like, um, it's like, okay, this was my perception now. What do I think now? And how do I walk in that now? It's as if my sense of self is changing. So I now see that true love and peace comes from God, not from external sources. So some questions that I'm pondering on and I'm reflecting on, and I'm going to use my FaithWorks journal to do so. Hold on. I'm going to use my FaithWorks journal to do so. I love this journal. Um, Is what is peace for you? How do you create an atmosphere of peace for yourself that maybe other people can enjoy? But most importantly, it needs to be a peace that's for you period. The second question, is attention enough to be deemed as love? Oh my gosh, that one's so deep. That one is too deep for me. And I had to be honest with myself. These are questions that I literally created so I can go through the transformation that needs to happen, the growth that needs to take place. Is attention enough to be deemed as love? Be for real. What is love to you? And how can you give that love to yourself? Clock that T, Buki. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'm the type of person I love to find meaning in everything. So with that being said, I did some studies, well, some research about sensory recall. And that connects to the amygdala. In the hippocampus, which focuses focus a lot on learning and memory. So our senses is a pathway that connects that. Anyways, y'all, I'm a psychology major. Reminder now. But yeah, that is it. Thank you so much for listening and watching to the FaithWorks podcast. I am your host, Mario Jemaya, and I hope you have a great day. I pray that God begins to deepen your faith. I pray that you begin to understand how deep, how long, how wide, how high God loves you. God is with you. God is for you. 
God will never leave nor forsake you. And I just pray that in the name of Jesus, that God begins to make you aware of who you are in him. I pray that you walk with him, hold on to him, respect yourself because he respects you and loves you. In Jesus name, amen.